Morning, folks. Welcome to The Daily Politics. The government's under fire about its tax deal with Google. The U.S. search engine giant has agreed to pay £130 million in back tax and interest, which sounds a lot, but perhaps isn't when you consider Google books several billion pounds in British revenues every year. And Italy could be about to strike a much tougher deal, even though Google Italy is much smaller than Google UK. And the spectre of the looming tax return is weighing heavily upon many. Working out tax is such a tiresome affair, I usually leave it to my butler. It's happy days, however, for Google, who have come to a deal with Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs to pay £130 million. It's backdated. Uh, but not everybody's happy. No, no, no. Let's talk now to our political correspondent, uh, Vicky Young. She's in Central Lobby. Vicky, the chance began by hailing this deal as, quote, a major success. It now looks like uh, the government's a bit on the back foot, isn't it? Yeah, and I think what we'll probably see today during Prime Minister's questions, if Jeremy Corbyn decides to tackle the Prime Minister on all of this, I think he'll be desperate to try and get David Cameron to repeat that phrase. Is it a major success? Do they still believe uh, that it is? What they're clearly trying to do, Labour, here is to pin this on ministers. They are saying there should be no such thing as mates rates for these big companies. They're asking all sorts of questions, Labour, about what meetings Mr Osborne and Mr Cameron may have had with people from Google. How much did they know about all of this? Of course, uh, the bottom line here is we don't know much about the deal. It's HMRC, it's the tax authorities who deal with all of this. It is by its nature secret, so very hard for people to establish exactly what rate Google might be paying and how they came to this deal in the first place. Well, the politicians may shout about it, perhaps even on both sides of the house, but it isn't it the case that this is a done deal. HMRC has agreed with Google, that's it. They've probably signed a clause that it can't be reopened unless it was found that Google had some way broken the law involved in illegal activity. It is 130 million. Job done. That's right. And we've heard from people like Boris Johnson, the mayor of London, who, although saying it's not very much money, pointing out that actually they have done nothing wrong and actually it's the law probably that needs to change. Now, George Osborne would say, look, he has brought in a new tax on uh, diverted profits, for example. He is trying to tackle all of this. Of course, what would look bad would be if Italy, France, as has been suggested, that they somehow try and get more money and do get more money out of Google. That would then make uh, the HMRC here uh, look pretty bad but it's the corporation tax, it's the system that the UK has. The Treasury Select Committee has said it's going to look into all of that. The chairman of that committee is saying that the UK tax laws are too elastic. All right, Vicky, thank you very much for, for that. Ed Vizzi, the Chancellor described this as a major success. Boris Johnson said the money was a derisory. Who's right? Well, I think... Uh... What is right is that HMRC conducted a six-year audit with Google and mm. secured back taxes dating back to 2005. Uh, that the HMRC has said are the right taxes that Google should pay as a back tax. And I think what is right is that the Chancellor has introduced the diverted profit tax that Vicky referred to, which oh. means that going forward, Google will pay tax on uh, the profits it generates in the UK in a proper way. And in fact, the diverted profits tax is something that other countries around the world have started to copy it. And also the point about France and Italy is, is well made in the sense that there's not a single country, uh, a de developed country that's not wrestling with these digital companies that have, as it were, a global presence. And the UK but, 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 has but, taken the lead in the OECD in saying we but, have to sort this out but, on an international level as well. But isn't it right that under this deal, up until, the, uh, up until now, Google will not pay the diverted profits tax? No, the diverted profits tax has just come in. So it's the for the future. Yeah, yeah. So the this tax year, I think, is the first year that Google will pay the So it's not in any so profits that they so think have been diverted and now been covered it, by this deal. So it's put it, it going right. forward, it will pay it. And uh, uh, under this audit by HMRC, uh, we've seen 10 years of back tax being paid. So that's good. Is it all back tax or is it interest as well? Are there penalties? Well, I mean, uh, I think what you're getting at, this is a a confidential agreement in the sense that companies do reach agreements with HMRC about the right level of tax that they should pay and they probably reach but it on the basis that they're uh, some of the base of that for commercial reasons. But if it included uh, interest and but penalties, the amount of actual tax wouldn't be that huge. It would be less than £130 million. Well, you can, argue, you can argue the granular point, but the, the point is that the HMRC well, has, has well, gone am, through a very... I'm arguing it wouldn't. <laughs> a very, it would be. A very if, extensive if it includes order. penalties but we'll and all, interest, we'll all, everyone it would will be a lot every, less Everyone will have a view million. on what Google should pay fairly. What so I would is say, it a major success? What, what I would say is that the process is right. It shouldn't be for ministers to say... I understand that. I'm not... ..what a company should pay. It should, HMRC 
conducting an audit, of course, going through the books and reaching right. an agreement with Google. But, and as you it... know, when you reach an agreement like that, there may be issues to do with uh, interest and penalties, there, there, and there will also be calculations about if this, for example, came to court and the expense and time involved well, it... in that. So there will be could, all sorts it, of issues. That I understand all that, but would it be a major success if it turns out, as is being reported, that France and Italy, where Google is much smaller, it's a quarter of uh, what it is in, uh, here in France, ended up getting a lot more money out of them? Well, I'm not going to speculate on what France and Italy might but agree. Would it... People are already talking as though the Italians have secured a fantastic settlement. Uh, no, they Google. haven't, but they what seem think, quite what far think, down the road. What I think is a success is that we have this agreement with Google to pay these back taxes. We have a diverted profits tax that the other countries around the world are now copying. And we have is the it? UK in the lead in terms of international forums uh, saying that we need changes to international right. tax laws well, you, to cope you with say digital companies that are able to move you quite say freely it's around a success. the globe. But in 2014, Google's revenues out of the UK were almost £5 billion. Pounds, and it paid, it's not covered by the deal, this is separate from the deal, and it paid £30 million in corporation tax. Let me give you the figures again. £5 billion in revenues, £30 million in corporation tax. Is that a success? Well, those who've been watching the news in the lead-up to this programme will have seen the head of investigations at HMRC explaining that some of the calculations that are made effectively to... Criticise this settlement are not based on an accurate understanding of tax law. Tax law is complicated. International tax law is even more complicated. Right. I'm simply saying that I am confident that HMRC went through a very thorough process. But is it and it's fair? right that, that is, is an it, but, independent well, it, process. That I'm not sure that it's actually done 2014 yet. More. Is it fair that a company that makes revenues of almost five billion in Britain? pays only 30 million in corporation tax. We want companies to pay their fair share of tax. That's why the well, Chancellor introduced the diverted well, profits tax. He addressed that. And he was actually criticised in some international forums for saying, actually, you're messing with international tax treaties. Yeah. But he went ahead with it because he thinks it's the right thing to do. And that has now been copied by other countries around the world. Google will pay, I think, its fair share of tax going forward. Are and also, we are in the lead in international forums in saying well, this you is may be international in the lead, issue. Out of revenues of five billion, well, you've we made that point three that. times. Uh, let me make another point again. Out of five billion, the Exchequer got thirty million in tax. Is that fair? But you know what the issue is. The issue is that Google's okay. European headquarters are based in Ireland with sure. a low level of corporation tax. The same argument has raised well, in Australia, where Google's it says its, its Asia headquarters are based in Singapore and that's right. where it should pay well, its tax. So Google's argument, I mean, we are getting into lots of detail of which, you know... Yeah, but it's I important because this to, is money that pays for our but schools we know that Google, and hospitals. So, Google, well, let me ask Google's you this. position, in terms of its negotiations, is European headquarters... Well, let me ask you this. Has this agreement with HMRC now, has it um, established that, Brit that Google now has a permanent establishment in Britain? Well, that's a very technical... Uh, point, and that was uh, presumably that, that is part of the debate about whether Google is uh, paying its fair share of tax. I well, does it or uh, doesn't I, so it I, have a permanent you can establishment? The, you, can, you can ask the HMRC that on what basis it is both. Well, uh, you visited the headquarters. I think we got both, a picture uh, of the headquarters. Let's have a, that's the new headquarters because their existing one isn't big enough. This is the proposed headquarters up in King's Cross, 5,000 people. You were the one they've got at the moment. It's split between two sites. I think you went last week. They employ over 1,000 people. How, is it not incredible that anybody that is planning to build a bigger headquarters like that cannot, for tax purposes, have a permanent establishment in well, Britain? Well, I, I went to visit what is known as the Google campus, because I was yeah. supporting an organisation called Creative... Did it look Inc permanent to you? ...which, which supports... <laughs> I mean, was, an, an organization. was it a pop-up headquarters? An was it a pop-up headquarters or did it look permanent? An organisation called Creative mm. Does that look permanent to you? An organisation uh, called Creative England, which does a hell does of a lot of work supporting our fantastically successful creative industries all around the UK, but you're asking me a technical point, as I say. Well, well that's H not technical. It doesn't look that technical. <laughs> it looks like a massive headquarters. HMRC has conducted an extensive audit. It's come will to they a settlement still be with Google. Sending, will we they still be sending... We have a new be... tax regime, which was controversial with some of these digital right. companies. It was controversial in some international forums, right. but the Chancellor went ahead with it because he recognises right. what the public want to see, which is companies like this paying the tax... But the question is whether this is enough. And, uh, and let me come UK. to Labour, because the fact is that since 2005, Google has been following the principles of how you measure taxable profits that it agreed with the last Labour government. So if Google's not paying enough tax, it's as much Labour's fault as the Tories.
As I understand it, the first questions began to be asked in 2009. And of course, Margaret Hodge, Labour Chair of the Public Accounts Committee in the last Parliament, really took up the mantle of yeah, this campaign. Yeah, but she's campaign. not in government. She, she wasn't in government. The principles that Google followed in paying tax were agreed with the last Labour government. And time if has it's gone under on, paying tax, you made the wrong agreement. And time has gone on. A lot of time has gone on, if I may say so, Andrew, since 2009. And while I welcome steps to um, toughen up and agree internationally a more robust tax rate, Regime, I think we've got to recognise that circumstances and learning and understanding of Google's operations, it was a pretty new company in the mid 2000s. Um, Did you make it, a mistake in I, agreeing to such a lax tax regime? I have no idea, Andrew, about well, whether that tax government. regime was appropriate for well, companies like well, Google, was appropriate for other companies, well, or well, at well, the time, what I think we can all agree on is it's not appropriate. Well, hold now. on. It was a tax regime agreed by the last Labour government that allowed Facebook a multi-billion dollar corporation with massive business in Britain to pay corporation tax of £4,000 in 2011. It's derisory, isn't it? Yeah. Nobody could defend agreed that. By a, a system and agreed by your government. And what's really important, having obviously set up a tax regime that hadn't understood at the time the way in ah. which some of these international online, uh, really without much in the way of material You're substance con. companies, I think we didn't, perhaps You're any con. of us, accountants, tax people, the Treasury, governments, didn't understand, and perhaps the companies okay. themselves didn't fully, how their operations would knit to the tax regime that we'd had for many years. All right. What I think is really important now is that there's credibility in our tax system. And I have to say, as a taxpayer, you will feel as a taxpayer, my constituents who are taxpayers feel that this is really pretty insulting. We pay our taxes. Right. Our small businesses pay taxes. Family companies pay their taxes. They look at this and they think this is a deal for the rich and not for us. What would you us. do differently then? I think we, first of all, need to be much, much sharper um, about um, keeping expert HMRC staff who can negotiate the right deals. Ed's pointing out well, we don't have any HMRC information. HMRC uses its top experts in dealing it, with... Well, Google. perhaps it needs to invest more in the expertise that it you has. We've lost substantial numbers of experts in HMRC right. and we don't have any Not transparency. Not in the office that deals with and Google. And we don't have any you... transparency. Um, you know, this right. is something that the government is hotly defending, the privacy of Google's tax affairs, but that has to be balanced with public belief in the system and that's just you, you allowed a double Irish and a Dutch sandwich that's what Google were able to do <laughs> can you still do that uh, no, I think we've got rid of the double Irish, but I would <laughs> no, go back we to. Might still I would go sandwich. back to. We, I don't know if we have the Dutch sandwich. Uh, I was told the other day that the human brain can accommodate 4.7 billion books, but I can't accommodate whether we've got the double Dutch sandwich. All but right. I do think that we have raised 100 billion pounds in taxes, back taxes, including 38 billion pounds from right. back taxes from big corporations, okay. thanks to the experts in HMRC. Well, All from right. double Dutch um, to the so-called.